This video is a checklist to perfect your topology for your retopologized models. These tips will be useful for beginners as well as advanced users and even experts because everybody forgets some things sometimes. If you have any more points, feel free to post them in the comments. And if you don't know what retopology actually is or how you do it, make sure to check out my retopology in 6 minutes video. First, you should ask yourself whether or not your model will be for real-time or for offline rendering, because depending on your answer, the topology could look completely different in the end. Real-time rendering requires the model to be fairly low poly so that all the movements and modifications that you want to apply to the topology can be applied in real time so that there's no lag during the operation. Offline rendering basically means that every frame you want to render can take as much time as possible to get done. Once you know which rendering method you're using, let's talk about the poly count. For real-time rendering, we need to optimize the model's topology. The focus here should be on capturing the shape of the model rather than focusing on details. And if you have a specific budget, make sure that you don't waste polygons on areas where you actually don't see them, like the inside of a boot, for example. All the details that you can't really capture in the topology for real-time rendering, we can afterwards capture with normal maps that then imitate these details as if they were actually topology. If you're using offline rendering, of course, your model can have way more topology and you can actually include the details in the model. Of course, every PC has its limits, so make sure that you don't have millions and millions of polygons that your PC has to handle every time it renders a frame. We still have one more decision to make, or basically just determine, is your model a character or is it an object? For object topology, we should use as much topology to support the shape of it, but for character topology, we should use as much topology to support the shape and also support correct deformations for those shapes. So the topology for a stone, for example, doesn't need to deform well because stones deform, at least not in my experience. But if you, for example, have a character that is supposed to fight, the topology needs to support those deformations so that the character still looks natural in different poses. Keep in mind that what you would consider characters could also be objects if they're, for example, not moving. Another question that I've seen quite a lot is which objects are supposed to be part of the same topology? Everything that is connected in real life should be connected in your retopology as well. Also, if you have objects with smooth surfaces, make sure that you're not wasting any topology on those smooth surfaces. Optimizing topology for deformations means that when you're actually performing those deformations, the topology can deform in a way that looks natural while doing those movements. And not just the shape needs to look right, but the shader that you want to apply to the character needs to look right as well. There are two main rules to keep in mind when you're creating to make sure that the topology supports good deformations. The first rule is to place all your poles and stars in areas where you don't necessarily have a lot of deformations. The other one is to align the faces with the axis of rotation of the deformation. With every deformation that you apply to an object, there's always an axis that that is happening on. And you should always make sure that the topology that is in the area of the deformation follows that axis. Another small note, if you're creating a showreel, make sure that all your topology looks good so that nobody can doubt that you're an expert in retopology and topology overall. When you're retopologizing, you're probably working with quads, but there's another shape that you can use in your retopology. Triangles are not the devil, okay? They can be actually quite useful, so make sure that you know what they can be used for and when you shouldn't use them. Generally, quads are easier to edit. So if you, for example, want to change your topology at a later date, make sure that you're working with quads and that you keep those quads and not triangulate your mesh. Fun facts, quads are basically just triangles. So even though you might see quads, they're secretly triangles, but they're of course treated a little bit differently. Triangles have two main benefits that you should know. If you're importing a model into a game engine, all the quads will be triangulated. But that can lead to a problem. If you have UV maps and textures for your model, you need to make sure that the topology as well as the faces and edges are the exact same in the 3D modeling program as well as the game engine. So you can triangulate some faces yourself if you're not sure how the game engine would actually triangulate those shapes. You can also use triangles to end edge flow or retain a shape. So if one model of the object requires way more topology than other parts of the model, you can use triangles, for example, to end an edge flow so that you're not overflowing the rest of the model with too much topology that isn't necessary in any other place. We talked about it a little bit, poles and stars. Poles and stars are basically vertices with three, five or more connected edges. They can be used to redirect edge flow, for example, to keep dense topology in one area, but they can lead to problems with deformations and shading, like reflections, for example. So make sure that you place those poles and stars in areas of your model that has the least deformation. Also make sure that you don't have too many poles and stars, try to minimize the amount. 
Now we get to the actual devil of retopology, end goddess. Basically faces with five or more edges. If you're not trying to create a super low poly hard surface model, then Engons should be avoided at all costs. They don't shade well, they don't subdivide well, they don't deform well, and they can lead to import problems if you're, for example, moving your model from Blender to ZBrush. Sticking to animations and deformations, make sure that you give joints more edge loops. The more topology a joint has, the easier it is to keep its shape. A good principle to follow for joints is the plastic straw method. If you look at a plastic straw, it's basically a smooth surface all around. But then if you get to the point where you can bend the straw, you have these zigzag formations. Basically, you could say it has more topology in that area. Also make sure that you space out your topology so you have an even distribution on your model. That is less applicable for objects with very smooth surfaces like crates for example. But if you have objects where you basically need to place vertices everywhere to capture the shape, make sure that these vertices are distributed evenly. Otherwise it can lead to shading errors. And it's also easier to just overlook the topology. Tools you can use for that is the smooth brush in scope mode. You can also use the control V smooth vertices function in edit mode. Or you can enable the loop tools add-on and use the space button or function, whatever you want to call it. Another one that I haven't really seen talked about that often is to make sure to check for duplicates. It might be that you duplicate or extrude something and then you actually don't move the vertices. Then you would have vertices on top of each other, which can lead to problems in the later stages of your process. To fix that, it's actually pretty easy. If you know which vertices you want to merge, you can just press Shift X to combine them in the middle. Or if you don't know where they are, you can press M and then merge them by distance. And if they are close enough, it'll merge them together. Once you're done with your topology, also make sure to check your normals. Normal should always point outwards. And you can very easily fix that by going into edit mode, hitting Alt N, and then recalculate outside. Or you can also just flip the normals if you already know where the normals are facing. Another easy way you can see whether or not your normals are flipped is to go into the viewport shading and then enable back face culling. If the normals of your topology are facing in the right direction, you should just see the surface of that topology. But if they're facing in the wrong direction, you should be able to just see through the faces. And last but not least, make sure to check for holes. For example, if you're using the mirror modifier, even though you have clipping enabled, the vertices on the axis might not be connected, which could become problems later on if you, for example, want to apply a subdivision modifier. An easy way to check that would be to enable the 3D print toolbox add-on. Click on solid and then it shows you the amount of non-manifold edges on your model. If it says zero, then you don't have any holes. Go into edit mode and you can actually select all the non-manifold edges with that add-on. Make sure to check out my Retopology Explained in 6 Minutes video if you have yet. Thank you for watching and maybe I'll see you next time. See ya!